Is art a meritocracy? We certainly tend to think so. I think when we aren't paying attention, we assume so. But is it? Is it actually? I thought it might be an interesting thing to think through and turn over for a little bit here. What would it mean for art to be a meritocracy? First, I think there'd need to be objective merits, of course. There would need to be merits for the meritocracy to be built on, and they would need there would need to be some way to gain them, and there might need to be some way for them to be awarded. And then based off of those merits, that would naturally produce an objective hierarchy of meritorious individuals, people who have more merit than others in art. And then why are you gaining those merits if there wasn't some sort of agreed upon distribution of positions based on merits in accord with the hierarchy of individuals. That's not the case at all with art. There are no objective merits to be gained and certainly none to be awarded in art. Art is completely subjective. Um, even the things we like to believe would be objective. Like you can gain the merit of being good at anatomy, of knowing all of your anatomy. Well, unfortunately, art is subjective, and there's many people who know their anatomy in and out, up and down, and they don't make great drawings with it. And there certainly isn't an actual hierarchy of meritorious individuals. Artists are appreciated and loved for different things from artist to artist. We don't dislike an artist who is great at color because we never see their drawing work if they don't share it. We don't dislike someone who's great at drawing because we never see their color, right? Like you probably don't even, your mind never even asks for it. You're just looking at the work that is presented. Artists are loved and appreciated for all sorts of different things. Even amongst artists who are appreciated for the same thing, color, drawing, perspective, there is no way to actually stack up their work such that you can make a, a real objective comparison between who is better at what, right? If you picked 10 artists who are great at color and uh, really top of the line, and you lined up all their five best pieces each on a wall, you would be hopelessly lost trying to arrange them in order from best to worst. It, and, and if anyone else attempted to do it, they would get a completely different order, most likely. And as hard as it may be to accept, there is certainly not an agreed upon distribution of positions based on merits. Definitely not. Um, once you've entered the professional world uh, as an artist, if that's what you're going for, you will discover very quickly, as everybody does, that you work with people all the time who are way more capable than the job that they do, and people who are way less capable than the job that they do. They struggle to hit the mark for their job. You will also find yourself in work positions where you look around at your peers, and you will see that someone who struggles to hit the mark um, is actually paid more than the person who uh, is way more competent than they need to be to do their job. That's because the positions and the compensation for those positions are not distributed by merit in this industry. They are distributed by who needs what, when, who's available to do the job, at what price, how pinched the project is. There, there's, you couldn't make a list. You know, there's an infinite number of conditions that are determining uh, who gets hired where and at what rate. And it is certainly not only merit that is determining that. Merit plays a role. It plays surprisingly less of a role than you might expect in certain situations, not in all situations, of course, but um, that alone sort of busts apart the hope that art could be considered a meritocracy in any realistic sense. And that can be a little hard to believe or live by until you've been in those positions and experienced it firsthand, but everybody does, you will find that. Uh, since that little list of things that would need to be true for art to be a meritocracy are not true, what the heck is art? Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna linger on that. I mean, hell if I know. Whatever it is, it's not to be categorized. That's for sure. 
any categorization any categorization of art meritocracy anarchy pure free market function they all fail to capture its scope and they're only a useful lens for analyzing one little thing about art or the art world or artists or the art industry at a time there are artists and what each individual artist chooses to believe in imbue with value and live by and that that determines what art is in their little corner of the world Let's let's not spend too much time trying to figure out, well, if it's not a meritocracy, then what is art? Let's ask instead, do we actually want art to be a meritocracy? The gut feeling, it seems to be, even amongst people who realize that, meritoc that art is not a meritocracy, they feel like it should be. And I don't know, should it be? Really? Really? If it was really going to be a meritocracy, who decides the field of merits? right? What are the merits then? Do you get merits for just your skill? Do you receive more merits for money earned? Irregardless of your skill level, if you're just a better businessman at marketing yourself? Or maybe the merits are based on the prestige level of the projects that you worked on. Of course, then who evaluates and deems those areas uh, acceptable? Who who decides what the values are within each one of those areas, right? Who's the person who evaluates someone's skill level to be acceptable or to be at a certain to be at a certain gate? Who who evaluates what the prestige of one project is versus another? Does that then just come down to a new list of merits for the project? Did that movie or game make more money? Does is that what decides that project's level of prestige? I, I think I think it's clear that this sort of spirals out into um, nonsense very very quickly. It, it it really as soon as you start trying to pin that stuff down, uh, maybe you're making it meritocratic, but it certainly doesn't sound or feel like art, does it? Art is personal. Do we really want to gate people's personal expression by some very wishy washy? conception of merit? Do we want to be tricking ourselves into thinking that there is a degree of difference between personal expressions based on the virtuosity of execution? I don't know. My gut says no. It may sound like I'm advocating for a structureless art world. I'm not. Probably, it's probably not possible. And I actually don't think there's anything wrong, of course, with liking the best art best. My problem is with the erroneous self-judgment that gets attached to it. I think that we should kind of work together as a community to make the idea of feeling bad that your work doesn't measure up seem completely ludicrous. Just don't leave it on the table that that's even a possibility, that you can sort of dig yourself into an existential hole because you don't like the way your artwork compares to others. Oh, man. All right, so what do we do if it's not a meritocracy? What's the point of all of all the practice then? All of the all of the hard work that we're putting into improving if it's not a meritocracy? Well, I think you know what? Just relax into the fact that this is all about you and your own standards, right? I feel like we all know that if someone pokes us on it, but you really got to live by it, right? Like remember always that it's just about you and your own standards. Because when you remember that, it's a it's much harder to let them then turn around and bite you in the face and get you all mixed up and feeling depressed and lost about your work. It's just, you're the one setting all these, these standards. You are the one deciding your values. And there's no need to let that hurt you. And don't go believing this is all about skill and being able to do this checklist. Like, is your perspective right? Are your values right? Your colors, et cetera, et cetera. It's not. It's never been that. That's just letting others determine your whole outlook just because that's what gets amplified by, you know, whatever you think is amplifying certain videos or education that you see online. You know, a lot of it is true. It's not necessarily untrue. A lot of a lot of perspective-based work would be improved by a better understanding of perspective, of course. A lot of value-based work would be improved by an understanding of values. But 
it would be out of balance to just think that they must be good and understood and well executed in all of those dimensions just because that's what you're supposed to do. That's not right. That is not right. A piece that is about, for example, showing the acting on a character and the depth of emotion possible in a drawing can be done perfectly well with just lines. And if the values are subpar, that does not decrease from the effectiveness of that piece. You could make an argument that, oh, the values would make it better, but you're talking about a hypothetical other picture, right? So be very calm and confident that your personal connection with the practice is the core of the whole endeavor. That way you don't waste a second of your future being bitter because people who shouldn't have the skills or the jobs or the merits have them. And even though you did this, this it doesn't seem to work for you and you don't have the job, you don't have the skills. Res rescue yourself from that pain. Don't put stock in that at all. There's a way to work hard at all of this without being bound up by that stuff. The idea that this is all an objective meritocracy where we will get what is coming to us if we are good enough at a list of vague things that someone else handed us is an invitation to forever compare yourself to others and draw real pain and suffering from it without a real idea of what part of what you're doing you are comparing to what someone else is doing. You're just completely lost. Drop it. Drop it. Get rid of it. You don't need it. Look inward. Focus on how you feel about your practice. Get better at the things that you really feel you need for the thing that you're trying to communicate. If you don't know what you're trying to communicate, maybe don't waste some of the most valuable years of your life arbitrarily practicing skills that you'll never use, you know? Like, it, it takes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours to get good at the technicals of art, and the popular online advice seems to be to pile them all on your plate in one go. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's crazy. That is, of course, crazy. And it is especially crazy to do that without having even the faintest idea of what you plan to do with it. Don't be fooled. You can absolutely spend 10 years doing that and then find at the end of it that you didn't think at all about what the application was going to be, what about it you actually liked. You'll find yourself wishing that you had thought about it because that part of the process requires practice. That part is actually another skill that needs to be figured out. And then you're way behind on that, but you don't have time now because you just spent 10 years eating a big heaping spoonful of raw, unwise skill. And, and you're out of energy and you're out of time and you need to go make money. And then before you know it, you have become near masterful at some of the hardest stuff there is to learn and you need to shop it around at the lowest possible price to anyone who will pay for it. And trust me, there are plenty of people in this world happy to take advantage of artists for less than they are worth and you'll try it out for a few years and you will realize that if you had put those same 10 years into, you know, any normal blue collar job, you actually would have wound up making similar amounts of money to the money that you're making now and you'll quit. And I know this is true because I've seen tons of people do it. I've seen tons of people do it. Or they need to at least take a hard detour into another job to make their money and then they wheel back around and come back to their art years later. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. And all you have to do to not let it happen is not let other people tell you what your career is going to be and what you need to do to be a good artist. That's not what it's about. Trust yourself. Thanks for drawing today.